you know, before we kind of start, you know, just kind of listening to, uh, you know, what everybody was saying. It's funny how things coincide with each other because that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in my notes. You know, I know my voice is kind of slow and kind of graspy right now, but this is probably the comments you're going to probably see me right now <laughs> because, because what I do, I'm passionate about what I do. You know, because I want to hang around people that's enthusiastic. I want to hang around people that have vision. I want to hang around people that's destined to be great. You know, and um, I think today we're going to talk about, you know, how to build a winning team. You know, I think that's what we're going to talk about. I'm not Dr. Phil. I'm a little handsomer. You know, I can have you. I want to. But, um, you know, I just want to talk about a couple of things on how to uh, build a winning team. But before I kind of start, we, was, we were uh, working out this morning. And uh, one of the coaches said a quote this morning that really shook me to the core. To the core. He said this, and this is so profound. He says, go fast, go alone, go together, go far. I'm telling you, that shook me. Because a lot of times in, in companies and things that we do, we want to go so fast individually, and all of a sudden we're out there by ourselves. But if we go together, I'm telling you, you can build something great. You know, so I'm, I'm going to show this film, and I know you're going to watch this film, and like, what in Sammy Hill are we watching this NBA <laughs> thing for? But I'm telling you, it's... it's First of all, I'm, really, I'm mad at them, number one. You'll understand why I'm mad at them. So let's watch the film and we'll kind of discuss what I'm, what I'm talking about. It's like 29 seconds. Good snap, good hold, he missed it. He missed it, oh my goodness. Stop it right there, stop it right there, stop it right there. He missed it, he missed it. You know, <laughs> you know what's so funny is um, I'm, really, I'm really mad at this team. The, re the reason why I'm mad at this team is because as a coach, you know, I thought I had it all together. I thought I knew how to build a great team. But this team right here showed me something on how to win together. You know, a lot of times we get, we get selfish and we do the things we want to do. But I'm going to tell you something. We say the cliches things, oh, I love my brother, I love my coaches. But I play for the Ohio State University. I hope no Michigan fans in here. I, I played for Ohio State. I went to the Super Bowl. I did some great things. I was upon some great teams. But we didn't win as a team. This team right here showed me how to do it. They showed me how to love. They showed me how to care for my coaches. They showed me how to care for my teammates. High school kids. I'm a coach. I've been coaching for 10. I told you it was going to get loud. <laughs> I've been coaching for 12 years. So I'm thinking I have it all together. I have my little plan out, a 12-step pro 12 process on how to build a winning team. I had no idea. But these kids right here taught me something. So the things that I say on how to build a winning team, take this stuff to heart. I didn't mean to get all excited, that scared you. <laughs> but I'm so excited because I got a new outlook on how to build great. I have a new outlook on how to serve. I have a, a new outlook on, on, on how to motivate people. I have a new outlook because of these jokers right here. They taught me. So I'm going to ask you a question. How do I build a great team? Let me ask you another question. What does leadership look like? Y'all can, can talk to me. How does leadership look like? What, what, is a, what, is a, what makes a great leader? I'm going to point you out, just like in the classroom. What, make, what makes a great leader? Not afraid to follow. Not afraid to follow. What, makes, what else makes a great leader? Uh, guy in blue back there. I'm going to call you. Y'all going to talk to me today. <laughs> <laughs> what, what makes a great leader? Being willing to take a chance. Say that again? Being willing to take a chance. Being willing, willing to take a chance. What else? Being a good example. Being, you strong. Being a good example. <laughs> I remember uh, we were playing uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we're, we're in the huddle. You know, I'm in the huddle, and Eddie George is in the huddle. A guy named Lorenzo Neal is in the huddle. And the play before, one of the I hope there ain't no Pittsburgh Steelers fans in here. <laughs> I was straight up gonna call security. <laughs> <laughs> but we're playing Pittsburgh, and the play before, Eddie George is limping back to the huddle. And there's a guy named Lorenzo Neal. I don't know if you know Lorenzo Neal, but he's a little short guy about this big with muscles. You know, he, he like, he's kind of shaped like SpongeBob SquarePants. Kind of 
but he can bench press 275 like 26 times. That's how strong this guy was. And the thing about it is, is he saw that A.G. George was hurt. And this is what he said, I'll never forget it. And he, he was a big, little short guy, but he had a high voice. I don't know why. Was that? He would say this. He said, Eddie. That's how he talked. He said, Eddie, don't worry about it. Just get on my back and you follow me. And everybody's like, what is he talking about? <laughs> so the play is called, and it's, it's a dive play to Eddie George. And Lorenzo said, Lorenzo Neal said, follow me. So Eddie George gets the ball, and Lorenzo Neal runs through the hole and knocks everybody out the way. And he hugs Eddie. He said, Eddie. All you gotta do is follow me. See, that's leadership. So when you see somebody that gets, gets their feelings hurt in, a, in, in, in making a call, you say, you know what? Just follow me. Let me, talk, let me teach you how to talk to this person. See, we think leadership is about a dictatorship. No, you do what I say. I sit back in my chair with my coffee and my Starbucks. Oh, you do what I say. See, leadership. It's about serving. Leadership is about saying, you know what? I see that you're hurt. I see that you, you, the situation is going on. I see that you can't, you can't do this right at the moment. Let me serve you and let me help you. Just like Muhammad Ali. It, Muhammad Ali was probably one of the greatest boxers of all time. But have y'all noticed, y'all didn't notice that every time he walks in the ring, there's a guy beside him. He's not the cut man. He's not on the payroll. But he's telling Muhammad Ali how great he is. He's like, you're the champ. You're the best. You're pretty. All this stuff. So now, when he, oh, this is good. When he gets in the ring, the, Muhammad Ali is repeating what the guy was saying. That's leadership. It's when you see somebody that feels that they can't make it, when you see somebody that's down, depressed, and all this, you walk beside them and you say, you know what, you're the greatest. You're the best. That's leadership. I told you they ruined me. <laughs> that's leadership. Leadership is not sitting back in your chair. Oh, you do what I say and yelling and cussing at people. That, that means that man or woman is insecure. It's about saying, get on my back and follow me. That's leadership. Now my voice is high, that's leadership. <laughs> Point number two. I remember, um, no, just imagine if we were taking a trip, we were all going, let's say we're all going on a trip to Hawaii. Ain't everybody been to Hawaii? Y'all lying, y'all went to Hawaii. <laughs> but just imagine, if all of us was going to fly to Hawaii, we all had our ticket. Before the plane could ever leave, everybody has to be on board. You got to catch that, did you? Mm -hmm. If your company or your team is ever going to take off, everybody's got to be on board. And check this out. Before the plane can ever leave, it can't have access baggage. And when you talk about access baggage, access, access, whatever that word is, access <laughs> baggage can be selfishness, it can be pride, it can be gossip, and basically saying I'm not on board. And I remember one time we were playing the Baltimore Ravens. We have any Baltimore Ravens fans in here? Thank goodness. <laughs> but I remember we just came off of the Super Bowl run, and the next year we had a, we had a, we had a better team. So I'm starting, and me and Derek Mason is playing where we're probably one of the top receivers in the league at that time. So my coach calls me in the office the day before we're about to play the Baltimore Ravens. The day before we're about to play the Baltimore Ravens. He said, Chris, uh, we're going to change up the lineup, and uh, you're going you're gonna to play the third wide receiver. And I'm sitting back in my seat, and I don't say bad words, but I just wanted to let them have them like, you know, why do I have to play the third wide receiver when I've been starting all year? And I remember, after that game, we lost. I had so many, many regrets because I act like I was on board, but I actually wasn't. And everybody gets mad. I don't know if y'all watched the game, but that was a long time ago. But I know um, everybody got mad at Al Del Greco saying he's the reason why we lost the game or, you know, Eddie Fumble, all that stuff. But if you look at that game back over, look, look over, there's about four or five plays that if I would have been on board, could have actually changed the game. 
But because of my selfishness and because of my pride and because the team wanted to go this way, I wanted to get off because I wasn't on board. I wasn't on board. But see, I watch these high school kids love each other. I watch these kids. Every, I mean, I'm talking about from, from the, the center to the guard to the, the coach to the trainer to the parents. Everybody was on board. This team right here, and I'm just going to be straight up honest with you, on paper, we should have lost every single game. Every single game we should have lost. On paper, we was like, there's no way we can possibly win. We're playing Brentwood Academy, who has guys that go to Alabama, to go to all these big schools, and we have kids that's going on our team that barely can get into UT chat because of football. But see, the thing that we had, I hope they ain't a Brentwood Academy fan. Yeah. <laughs> but the one thing that we, the one thing that we had is number 53, love 57. Uh, I can't see the numbers. Number 12, love number 41. Number 57, or just act like you know what it is. Number 18, number 37 was on board. This, look at, look at this. This coach right here was on board with this guy right here. So now we got a situation to where it doesn't look like we're going to win. There's no possible way. But you got 87 people that's on board. So now, am I screaming too loud? Am I, you know, the reason why is I want people that's excited. I want people that's excited. Because if I have people that are on board, we can change the world. Are y'all feeling me on that? If, if, if you surround yourself with people that don't have no selfishness, no pride, and they're with you together, you can soar to so many heights. But what we do is we, we carry these baggage in, we carry these baggage on the plane and say, you know, it's all about me. It's all about what I gotta do instead of dedicating yourself to the process. Point number three. I hope I'm, I hope it's number three. <laughs> but every, every one of your team has to have an edge. You, you understand what I mean by that? It has, what, what, do you, what do you think I mean by having an edge? And I'm going to point to you. Something that makes me unique. Make it unique. What else? Swagger. Glasses. Right, right. Uh, what's your name, sir? Here. Yes. What do you think about what I mean by having an edge? Yes, sir. Yeah. Everybody's turning away because they want to <laughs> what, 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 introverts. What, that's okay. Right, right, right. Hey, hey, we're in this together. You know, the, I'm saying all this stuff, but I promise you, I'm still learning how to do this. So it's not about having the right answer. Yeah. Let's just let our callers down. Let's have some fun, man. You know, hey, so if you don't know, so what? I'm going to call on you, though. What, yes. What do you think about having an edge is? They need to care. Have yeah, fire. That, whoop, say that. That's my, you strong. That's my first point. <laughs> but when you talk about having an edge, is I broke down every letter, E, D, G, E. Okay, number one, you got to have enthusiasm. You got to gotta have enthusiasm to answer that call. I mean, just, just, just to kind of give you an illustration. Yes, yesterday, me and my little girl was driving, and the hot sign was on from Krispy Kreme. <laughs> <laughs> But I was so, in, in, and all of a sudden, we went from being tired and being sleepy. We saw the hot sign. My little girl's like, Daddy, let's go get some Krispy Kreme. We was excited to go get some Krispy Kreme because it's good. But that's the same enthusiasm that we got to have when we wake up in the morning to say, you know what, I, get to do, I don't have to do my job. I get to do it. Because a lot of times we come to our job like, oh, I got to answer the phone. Oh, my kids are driving me crazy. Oh, my kid loves to wear blue. <laughs> All this, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, my boss gets on my nerves. But instead of coming and saying, man, I get to answer these phones. Don't get me wrong. I don't float on air every day like, oh, I get to do it. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I don't want to do it. But there's times where I gotta have enthusiasm and say, man, I love coaching this kid. I love giving water to the players. I love, this is the true story, I love washing the kids' clothes after they get done working out with your sweaty and it stinks. I gotta be enthusiastic about it. Why? Because I'm on board. There's times after practice where the coaches, coaching staff, cleans up the locker room after the kids. There's times where I don't wanna do it. I wanna go home and watch reality shows. <laughs> But the reason why I pick up the trash, the reason why I pick up their clothes, the reason why I do all this stuff is because, number one, I'm on board. I'm enthusiastic about it. 
Don't get me wrong that I've been walking around this Wilson, you know. <laughs> no, it's an attitude. It's my attitude that's going to determine my altitude. It's an attitude to say, you know what? Yes, my body's tired, but I'm going to pick up his trash. Yes, my body's tired. Yes, I'm going to fill up the water cooler every day. Yes, I'm tired and I don't want to coast, but I'm going to give up everything I have. Why? Because I'm on board. Man, it's so simple, but we make it so hard. We create all this, these 12-step programs on how to build a winning team and you know, have this philosophy stuff. But man, if we put our agenda to the side, and say, you know what, I signed up for this. Why? Because I'm on board. And if you have a group of people that have the same vision, that have the same enthusiasm, that seem to have the same attitude, that have the same heart, that has the same passion, you're gonna soar to so many heights. You're gonna soar. You know why I believe it? Because 83 guys showed me how to do it. I watched. The quarterback, who's, who, who's at Navy right now. I watch, this is gross, I'm sorry. I, I watch a guy where the guy was sick in the game and everybody was on the sidelines and he was about to pass out and the kid was about to fall and the starting quarterback, he went over there and he was holding him. He would say, you know what? I'm not gonna let you fall. I'm not gonna let you give up. Why? Because I'm not on board. We're both on board. Letter D is you gotta be determined. The letter G is you gotta go get it. You wanna hang around people that's going to get it. When that phone rings, got it. If the boss was, got it. It's kind of like this. Just some, I remember watching uh, dog racing. You ever, you ever watch dog racing when they, they're in the gate and that little rabbit comes out and them jokers is just <laughs> I mean, it's just right when the gate opens, they're just like <laughs> Because they're aiming for something. And that's the same thing is, when you, oh, you ain't gonna run that fast, but when you open up that door to your job, you gotta <laughs> When you gotta answer that phone, <laughs> I got it, why? Because I'm on board. And this, is, this, is, this last one, E, is, I love this one, is you gotta be eager to get better. Listen, I know I'm up here talking, I don't know everything, but I'm always eager to get better. I watched Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice is one of the best wide receivers I've ever seen. But this guy right here, Jerry Rice, was always eager to get better. He didn't work on what he did great. He worked on his weakness, so we always gotta be eager to get better. Y'all doing all right, y'all good? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what number on. Just, I don't know. <laughs> number five or four. Just y'all bear with me. Four or five. This is a big one. Everybody, every everybody has to stand up to adversity. You got to be willing to look at. You got to surround yourself with people that's willing to overcome adversity. You gotta stand with people and say, you know what? Yeah, we're going through a tough situation. Yeah, uh, everything's not going like we want it. But you know what? I'm on board and I'm gonna stand in adversity with you. Just like, I hope we don't have no Cavs fans in here. I'm, a, I'm not a Cavs fan or, or Cleveland, they're not Cleveland Browns. What do they, what do they call it again? Cavs, the, the, guy, the people that just won the basketball game. Yeah. Yeah. Cavs, yeah. yeah. So one of them, they're one of them teams. <laughs> but check this out. This is a perfect example of how to overcome adversity. They're down 3-1. Check this out. Y'all, you got to understand the significance of this. They're down 3-1 to the best team in the history of basketball. Listen, I mean, they won 73 games and lost nine. So they're considered the best team of all time. So now I'm looking at, my, they're looking at their situation. They're down 3-1. And everybody around the world said, this series is over. But you got to remember, they didn't hear that report. They're inside their locker room and say, you know what? Yeah, we're down 3-1, but you know, we got LeBron James, we got Irvin, we got all this stuff. We already prepared for this. I'm on board for all of this. So now, yeah, we're looking at 3-1, but I got a couple of guys that's willing to fight. I got a couple of guys that say, you know what? I'm staring at adversity, and I'm not going to bow down to adversity. That's the same attitude that you got to have. 
is you got to surround yourself with people. Number one, that's on board. You got number two is you got to you know look at adversity and say you know what? I'm not. This is not going to stop me from being where I want to be. Soaring to great heights, learning how to overcome adversity. Number five, I ain't gonna give you numbers no more. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta know your role. Well, I want you to watch this video. All right? Ooh, I hey, can you stop that one second? Okay. Oh, it works. I wasn't gonna say this. I'm, I'm, I'm killing you. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> but check this out. Check this out. Man, I'm getting excited, but I wasn't even gonna say this. When we talk about overcoming adversity, right? There was 16 seconds left on the clock, right? 16. So now it looks impossible. I'm even on the sidelines, like, man, my career, not my, my career, but my season's about to be over. I'm actually saying this. It's over. There's no possible way. But there was still 16 seconds left on the clock. You know. So we had we had some guys that still believed. I mean, at the time, I I really didn't, but. <laughs> But when I saw Kevin Dyson running down the field, I'm like, yeah, I'm cheering. In the <laughs> but in actuality, I didn't believe it. But we had some guys that actually believed that we could do this with 16 seconds left on the clock. Now, if you look at what the announcer says, he said, well, if they do this, this, they maybe it can happen. But when you have a group, group of people that, 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 that are on board, anything is possible. Now, this is the crazy part. I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. But here's the crazy part. Kevin Dyson wasn't even supposed to be in the game. Y'all didn't know that, did y'all? Kevin Dyson wasn't supposed to be on the game. Wasn't supposed to be in the game. It was supposed to be Derek Mason. But the reason why Derek Mason wasn't in the game is because he got dinged up. So now, Kevin Dyson, they asked Kevin Dyson, well, can you do this? Instead of him saying, Coach, I've never done it before. He said, Coach, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. He gets in the game. And... True story. I don't care what they tell you, and they say that we worked on it in practice. No, we didn't. <laughs> I, I, I played for them. <laughs> they, we've never, out of years I've been, we've never. So when they get on TV, well, uh, we practiced. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We just had guys that were dedicated to winning. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm showing this is the next, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is know your role. You got to know your role. Okay, play this. Thank you, sir. Seconds to go, and the possibility for possible. Uh, no, no, you, no, not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it right there. Stop it right there. Okay, I'm killing you. 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 <laughs> hey, check this out. Okay, the first person that caught the ball was Lorenzo Neal, right? He knew that he could catch the ball pretty good because that was his role. Just imagine if Frank Wachek would have ran in front of uh, Lorenzo Nick. It would have been a total mess. But see, he knew his role. Now, now, now uh, Frank Wachek, he caught the ball, right? And he threw it to Kevin Dyson. But what if Lorenzo Nick was like, man, forget about you. I'm throwing the ball. It would have been a big mess, but everybody knew their role and they worked together as a team. A team. Kevin Dyson wasn't even supposed to be in the game, but he said, you know what? I'm going I'm to do the best I can and do what I need to do. Why? Because the coach, the leader asked me to do this. So instead of me saying, no, nah, I'll do my own thing. I'll run and catch it on my own. If the, if, if, if the leader told me, you need to do this, this, and this. So instead of being doing my own agenda, I'm on board and I'm going to do what he says. Go ahead and play. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Now check this out. Check this out. Come on, man. Hey. Okay. Now this this is so this is so cool right here. Okay. When you talk about building a winning team. Okay. Who got all the glory in this play? Who got all the glory in this play? Who do they talk about all the time when they talk about the music and miracle? Dyson. Dyson. Mm -hmm. They talk about Dyson. Why checking? Who else? See, in your group, the ones that are, in, that are in front, they may talk about them all the time, right? But guess who? Look, look at all the blockers that are in front of them. Mm -hmm. Y'all catch that. Look at all these blockers. If those guys just did that play and take away all those blockers, they, Dyson would have got tackled. So even if you don't feel like you're in front, you're just as important. 
See, now, this plate goes down, it goes, goes down in history. It goes down in history, right? Even though those guys made history, the whole team makes history. Why? Because you've got all the people that are behind the scenes that are blocking for the ones right here. Are y'all catching that? So to build a winning team, the reason why these guys were blocking and the reason why they did what they were supposed to do is because, number one, they knew their role and everybody was on board. Everybody was on board. Everybody was on board. I'm pumping myself up. <laughs> I go start my own team. <laughs> because it's so, it's, we make it so hard. It's about saying, you know what, I put my own agenda to the side. I put my own stuff to the side because I'm committed to the process. I'm committed to serving. I'm committed to helping. I'm going to be enthusiastic. I'm going to be dedicated. Yeah, let's go ahead and finish that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when everybody comes together, knows their role, puts their selfishness aside, look at the celebration that you can have in your company. Right here. Look at it. Everybody celebrate. Everybody celebrate. And point number, I don't know, point number, whatever, number six. This is a real, this is a real good one, is you gotta be coachable. You got it. You say the stuff, the stuff that you were saying, I almost jumped out my seat back there because you were saying the exact same thing. We got to be coachable. We got to be coachable. I'm 40 something years old and I'll do some drills and my coach will pull me to the side and say, Chris, what do you think about that? Instead of saying, man, I know what I'm doing. I played in the NFL. Man, I went to Ohio State. I don't, I don't say that. Do you know who I am? Do you know? I, I made the all rookie team. Come on, man. I, I don't say that. I say, coach, yes, sir. Because the process ain't about me. It's just like this. I remember uh, we were playing the Buffalo Bills. I think it's always the Buffalo Bills. We were playing the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> and I was watching a wide receiver, and I, I'm, I'm going to say his name, but I'm making a point. I'm not saying anything mean about him. But it was a guy named Terrell Owens. And <laughs> <laughs> dang, Gummit. Oh, dang, Gummit. I'm sorry. OK, here we go. I was on the sidelines, and the, the football team was huddled up you know, getting ready to call a play. And the quarterback was like, Terrell Owens, come on, come on, come on in the huddle. And he was like, man, and he turned his back to the huddle. He turned his back to the huddle. He said, man, I ain't got time for that. And the quarterback's like, come on, man, get in the huddle. The whole, the whole huddle was like, come on, man, come get in this huddle so we can work together as a team to get in the end zone. But see, I'm going to step on some toes now. But see, that's what we do sometimes is you got a group of people that's on board and they're calling you over and say, come on, man, come join the process. But what we do is, I ain't got time for that. I'm trying to get mine. And, and, and the team that's on board is like, come on, come on, let's build something great. Let's go get in this end zone. Let's go change the world. Let's go do all this. But we like this because we're not coaching. But if you have some dedicated people that are on board, that are enthusiastic, you're going to soar to so many heights. And that, those NBA players soared to heights that I've never seen ever in my life. I promise you, these, at the beginning of the season, <laughs> we were in a meeting room, and our head coach was like this. <laughs> and our assistant coach was like, he said, how in the world are we going to win the game? Hmm. But we watched, we watched these kids, man. We watched these kids show the adults how it's done. Show me how to build a winning team. That's what they did. And I'm ruined because of it. 
Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. I know you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. This is a real good one. I love this one. I can't wait to get to this one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna step on y'all's toes just a, just a little bit. I love you at the end, but I'm gonna step on y'all's toes just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Don't point, but pick up the person. Catch that. I remember we were playing uh, the New York Giants. I hope there's no New York Giants fans in here because I'll call the squad team. But we were we were playing uh, we were playing the Giants and I'm in the huddle. Stevie Nears in the huddle. Eddie George in the huddle. And uh, they call a they call a running play to Eddie George. And as a receiver, I'm upset. I'm really upset. I'm like, man, can I be on ESPN just once? <laughs> and so I, I run out the huddle, and I I, I, <laughs> I was so mad. I run out there and the DBs, the defensive back is trying to cover me. I actually told him, I said, man, Eddie's getting the ball. I said, Eddie's getting it. He's like, for real? I said, yeah, Eddie's getting the ball. <laughs> he said, for real? Oh, true story. True story. I said, Eddie's getting the ball. He said, for real? I said, yeah, he's getting it. I said, it's coming this way. He said, all right. He said, okay, let's just act like we're blocking because I don't want to tackle him. I said, okay. So, so on the film, on the film, we're kind of doing this. <laughs> true story. So as I'm blocking, the defensive back whispers at me, he's like, here come Eddie. I'm like, for real? So I look back, and all I can remember was big 27 running me over. I mean, and I'm laying there, my face mask this way, my mouth guards that way, bows is that, my nose, everything. And I'm laying there, and I'm looking at, this, I'm looking at Eddie George, and I'm like, I'll never forget this. It's, you know, Eddie George had this big old hand, big body, but he had a little bitty head, so I'm kind of looking at <laughs> so I'll never forget this. I'm laying there, I'm hurt, I'm dizzy. I don't know what the heck is going on. I remember this. He picked me up. He got me some Gatorade. And on the next play, I got right back in the game. See, that's a perfect example of what you got to do when you're, you're, your teammate or your, uh, what's my colleague? What's that word, colleague? Colleague. Yeah, colleague. Yeah. That's how I'm a professional colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Gets knocked down. You don't point your finger at them and say, you didn't do a great job, you stink, you're terrible, you're not a good worker. No, what you do is you pick them up, you get them what they need so they can get right back in the game. It's not, see, what we do is we point, oh, you sorry, just imagine, could you imagine me already hurt? And Eddie's like, you sorry, you stink, you're no good, why are you on this team? But he saw that I was hurt and he said, you know what, I got you. So that's the same thing as we, when we see a coworker, a colleague, saying, you know, I'm knocked down, I can't answer the phone, I can't do this, no, it seems hard. You know what you say, you know what, I got you. I got you. I'm going to get you what you need to get you right back in the game. That's how you build something great. Build something great. It's about picking each other up. Helping each other get each other what they need and get right back in the game. Just like this morning, we have a kid, his name is BT. And he he can't finish a drill at all. Now I'm being honest, we were running 300 shuttles and he couldn't finish it at all. But guess what? Instead of, instead of guys like, man, you're soft, you're weak, you should build this team. The whole team ran over there and ran the 300 with him. <clears throat> Say, you know, BT, I got you. We can hit a take all day. I got you. BT, I know you're hurting. I got you. I know you're about to pass up, but I got you. I mean, this kid is walking like this, and you have 67 guys. Just, I got you. I got you. So, man, my encouragement to you is, just like the second point that I made, when you're building a team, before the plane takes off, make sure everybody's on board. Because if everybody's on board, those people that's on that plane is going to soar to so many heights. Why? Because you have a collective, a collective, well, give me a word, you, you went to college, what, you went to Ohio State? Uh, Where'd you go? I went to school. Okay. We don't have football. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just going to say a bunch of people, you have a bunch of people. <laughs> You have a bunch of people on the plane. <laughs> Number one, they're going the same direction. 
They left her XX badge. 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 Bad, bad, what am I? Bad. Bags. Thank you. Lipscomb. Bags. <laughs> and now they can sort of so many heights. Why? Because everybody's on board. So that's my presentation. I hope I didn't scare y'all. <laughs> but what I do, everything I do is with passion. Everything I do is with excitement. When I coach, I, I go even crazier. I mean, I, I don't demeanor kids and all that, but I'm tell you, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. I'm enthusiastic about everything I do because it's gonna rub off on the team. So I just wanna encourage you guys. Thank you guys for letting me speak. I'm so humbled. I'm so thankful that you guys let me speak. And you know, I'm gonna open up the questions for like five minutes if you want to. If y'all don't wanna ask any questions, then I'll go get a Mountain Dew and chill out. And, uh, <laughs> but if y'all want to ask a couple of questions, cause I know y'all had a long day. Did you have a long day? Did they have a long day? Yeah, I ain't even working today. <laughs> but listen, on a serious note, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart to allow me to speak to you guys, you know, because uh, it, it really is an honor to speak. I love to encourage, I love to inspire. But uh, if I can, if, if you guys want to ask any questions, just don't ask how much money I made. Because uh, when I go to schools, they ask me how much I'm money sure. I make, and I'm just like, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's always a kid. But if you got any questions, man, I'll be glad to answer them. So if you, you want to know anything, uh, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What's your favorite Steve McNair memory? Oh, oh yeah, I, I got it right. We were playing, um, we were playing the Dallas Cowboys. We got any Cowboy fans in here? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> we were playing, we were playing Dallas Cowboys, and this is how devoted this cat was to playing football and to his team. He just gave his body up. On the play before, his finger, this finger right here, was turned that way. Ooh. So, <laughs> I'll never forget this. He's in the huddle, and this is how calm he is. He's in the huddle, and he's calling the play, and nobody's even focusing on the play. They're like, man, your finger. <laughs> and, I, and I'm saying, and, and one, I think it was Frank Watchick was like, come on, you know, because like, his finger was turned that way. <laughs> and, he, and this is how calm he was. He's like, split right, uh, 360. So he go, and he walks up to the line. He says, blue 52, and just, I mean, I, you asked, I'm, <laughs> and he popped it back in, said hi, and he runs the test down. Because he knew that I don't care if my fingers broke, I don't care if it hurts, but it ain't about me. That's, that's a story. I was like, man, if it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> But you gotta do it cool, you can't do it on a few. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? That's a great question. Yes, ma'am. Just being in the industry for as long as you have and with your success, I'm sure you've heard a lot of other motivational speakers as well. Yes. What is the one, or if there is one, is there a quote that motivates you that has just rung in your ears throughout your career that gets you Uh, Tony Dungeon. He motivates me to want to coach in the field because he said this. He said, I don't look at the players that I coach as a commodity. I look at them as sons. So when I coach those kids, I don't look at them as, oh, you're just a football player. I look at them as sons. So that's the reason why I love coaching. That's the reason why I love motivating. motivating. That's the reason why I, I love these kids is because I look at them as my sons. And, they, and he's, he's one of the reasons why I coach. And I actually met him about four years ago. And you know, I, I was talking to him, you're talking about a man of wisdom, and he talks, he's one of the best leaders of all times, and this is how he talks. How, how you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm like, I thought he was gonna, you know, scream or something. He's, he's a quiet leader. I said, I said, well, you know, it's an honor to meet you. Chris, it's nice to meet you too. But then he went back and said, you know what, I remember coaching him, and I was afraid of him. That's, that's how he talked. <laughs> But why leader? So. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. So what have you found has been the difference in motivating adult versus your kids now? Yeah, yeah, so motivating adults. What you yeah, what you what's the difference? Can I, can I be real? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to step on somebody's brains right now. <laughs> See, we as adults, we put on a face. We act like we have it all together. So when you're talking to a group of people that said, oh man, I got this. <laughs> In actuality, they don't. It's like we're afraid to be coachable and we're afraid to listen. You know, instead of saying, you know what, I'm wide open because I want to get better. Look, it's like playing golf. 
the best in the world always has somebody telling them what to do. <laughs> Why? It's not that he's telling them what to do. It's because he wants to get better. He know. check this out, he knows his weakness. But see, what we do, what a lot of adults do is they're afraid to share their weakness. Because if they share their weakness, then, then you know, people say, oh, he's weak. No, no, no. If I need something, I'm going to tell you. And that's what adults do sometimes. We got to put on face. Oh, you know, put the hands on the hip like, oh, brother, I got it all together. <laughs> no. It's not like that. It's, you know, I mean, just like I talked about my coach. We're about the same age. And he said, Chris, you know, you know, what about this? You know, what about this? Yeah, okay, man, let me try that. Instead of saying, man, I, I got all again. I don't want to be like, let's, let's go back to my credentials. Hey, I don't know your team, dog. No. no, I said, you know, Coach, hey, well, that's a great idea. But what we do sometimes when you're talking to adults, they be like, Psst, do you know how old I am? See, there's, <laughs> just because you're old in age doesn't mean you have wisdom doesn't mean you have wisdom. And the way you have wisdom is take an instruction and apply that instruction. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Anybody else? Y'all ready to go, ain't you? I'm just kidding. Well, I'll take two more. I know you guys got to go. How do you um, teach or instill enthusiasm? You got a group of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, they got to watch you. you gotta, I mean, because there's times where our football players, they be coming here and just like, you know, they walk like that. So what I have to do, you don't want to be fake and phony, but you want to be in dude, hey, man, let's go. I mean, just like today, just like today, it, it was funny because we were getting ready to work out. And I'm like, man, I'm so tired. Man, I, I just want to go home. I want to go home and watch Days of Our Lives. I'm like, I'm not tired. <laughs> and guess what one of the kids said? Coach, let's go, baby. Let's go. Hey, I got you, coach. I'm feeding off his enthusiasm when I didn't have it. So what, what's going to happen is, Sometimes you don't even have to say anything, but they're going to watch your enthusiasm. They're going to watch how you attack things. They're going to watch how excited you get, you know? I mean, it's just like this. We have, I, I, was, uh, I was coaching a kid named Chapman Malone. When I tell you this, this kid is stoic, like, I would like, it's funny because I was like, great catch. you like, thanks. <laughs> but there was one game. We were playing Pearl Cone, and he made a touchdown. And I jumped up so high, and I'm like, <sighs> That's what I'm talking about, baby. All of a sudden, this dude's running down the sideline screaming. <laughs> and he never says anything. But you know why? He was feeding off my enthusiasm. So they're going to feed up your enthusiasm. And that's the issue. Okay. Thank you all so much. Listen, I'm so humble and so thankful you guys to let me speak. Thank you. As y'all can see why we got Chris. I, I don't know about y'all, I'm ready to run through a wall or sell some AD &D or something. Um, but, um, but anyway, so I hope that, um, you know, we don't want to be naive and say that this is going to change the rest of your life. Right. Hopefully it will to a small degree, but hopefully we can all take this away, take the things that we've talked about and we've heard about and and all that, and at least let it tr transform you a little bit in the next few days, which then maybe bleeds some of it, bleeds over to, you know, further than that and further than that. So, um, you know, I don't want to be so naive that we just completely changed your perspective on the business world, and, and 10 years from now, you're going to be doing amazing things, all because you came to the opinion managers meeting. <laughs> um, but, um, but hopefully this has inspired you some.